Hi folks, this is JP Leberton, project lead of Space Base DF9, and we're recording a video here at Double Fine to take you through the first few minutes of uh, playing the Space Base DF9 Alpha 1 build. Uh, hopefully it'll introduce you to some of the concepts in the game, and um, yeah, maybe provide some guidance for players who are still learning the game or struggling with the first, with the first little bit, trying to get a, a starting base up and established. So uh, yeah, let's, let's jump into it. Our plan is to do, uh, you know, this is Alpha 1, and we're going to be releasing, you know, an Alpha relatively regularly. And with each of these, we're hoping to do a video kind of like this, where we walk through what's new in, each, in, in the new build, um, and, uh, and yeah, provide some tips for, for new players and things like that. So we start off here, and we're looking at uh, this map of the galaxy. And uh, this is a little peek into the fiction of Space Base, where, you know, uh, there was some sort of big galactic social collapse and now we're trying to resettle the galaxy, and that's 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 the reason that everybody's going out into the into into deep space and creating these bases. Um, and yeah, so we're seeing some statistics here on like what our starting area might be. You know, we're gonna once we select a location here, we're gonna fire the little base seed off, and that's that's got our our initial three colonists in it. Um, and right now, these we're seeing these numbers change, and uh, don't worry too much about them right now. Like I think the the one thing that uh, th that, that matters right now is probably stellar density, where you want to pick something that's um, you want to pick something that's reasonably high if you're just starting out, um, because that'll give you some more matter to build with, and you'll just have you'll have more resources with which to, to start your base with. Um, so yeah, it's giving us all kinds of data here, you know, and this is hinting at some of the the procedural generation stuff that we're doing under the hood. Again, it's very simple right now. We have bigger plans for what this screen is going to be eventually, but yeah. So let's just go with this for now. And by clicking deploy, we are launching a little colony pod full of people out into space. And it takes a very, very long time for it to arrive there. But then they do, and many years later, our colonists pop out of the pod, and here they are in deep space. Um, so yeah, this is the main game screen. Uh, this is the little pod that was uh, flew across space for who knows how long. And yeah, and so now we've got our colonists out here. Um, so as the hint system here up in the top right informs us, uh, our citizens start with eight minutes of spacesuit oxygen. Uh, so we need to get a minimum viable base up and going, something we just need like a room that citizens can stand inside and breathe, breathe air in uh, and refill their suits and things like that. Uh, we landed in a good area here. It looks like we've got some asteroids here to start everything with. So yeah, let's get building. Um, this is our main like command UI panel on the right here. By default, we're in inspect mode where we can click to select stuff. Let's go to construct here and start building a room. Um, so yeah, let's go to the build room tool and that's showing us a grid that we can use to draw rooms. And um, yeah, let's build relatively close to these asteroids because pretty soon we're gonna be mining chunks out of these and refining them into matter that we can use to build more of our base with. So let's go ahead and drag out an area here. It's giving us real-time feedback on the area that we're dragging and saying like, you know, um, this is how much of a certain kind of uh, object that's critical for the survival of the base can fit. Um, and so yeah, now we've dragged this thing out and we see this kind of amber wireframe thing here. And that's kind of like a blueprint, you know, it's showing us this thing that's going to be built once our workers get to it and start actually doing the work on it. So um, for a minimum viable base, this is, this is a little non-obvious. You, you would learn about it through the hint system, but you might fail a little by doing, and, and hopefully the, the learning experience and losing is fun, as they say. But, um, but yeah, I'm here to like, I'm gonna show you how, you know, when people who are experienced with the gameplay. So I've carved out this room right here, and um, like, this is a five by five area room, and that means that we're gonna be able to fit a few objects in here. Um, and it might be, it might either become our life support zone or a refinery zone. You need a life support zone initially because um, those are the rooms that have the oxygen recyclers in them, and that's what that's what pumps usable, breathable oxygen into the base. And obviously, people need that. A bare minimum, you know, thing that people can be standing in and surviving in is, uh, you know, is just a room with some oxygen, is a life support zone with some oxygen recyclers. And here I've built out what's going to be the beginning, probably, of a hallway. Um, and I'm making it three wide just because that's kind of a nice wide width. Um, I'm actually building something here that's a little bit more deluxe than what like what would strictly be like a bare minimum starting base. Um, but yeah, that's it's really I don't know. I just kind of want to show like you know playing playing it a little more advanced, you know, do, being a little fancier because you know we're we're developers of the game obviously, and so we know we know some tricks, and hopefully you can learn a little bit by watching. So yeah, um, these rooms look good here. This will be like a central hallway, and this will be our airlock, which is also a critical thing. And this will be another room, and uh, I'll get into what we're going to use that for in a bit. So I'm going to hit confirm here. Time has been paused here, so we're not 
eating away into these, uh, these poor citizens' uh, bits of spacesuit oxygen here. Time is paused when you're laying out building commands, so yeah. Um, we're going to go up to confirm here. It's giving us a preview um, uh, of uh, how much matter it's going to cost. Matter is this generic universal resource that you know you kind of build everything out of, kind of Star Trek replicator style. And we start with 2,000, and we need to ration that fairly carefully because 2,000 matter isn't a whole lot. Um, and this, these these rooms that it's that, that we've marked out here, it's telling us are going to cost 982 matter. So let's confirm that. And now the hint system informs us, you've designated construction but have no builders. Use the roster screen to assign at least one citizen to builder duty. Everybody's got different, uh, I'm gonna hit space here to pause. That's like a shorthand for, uh, like it's a keyboard shortcut that takes us to the time control things here. We can speed up time once we've got some stuff to do, but I'm gonna pause time here just so we can look around a little bit. So yeah, these are our starting citizens. Uh, we've got Patrick Zatara. Um, and uh, yeah, each of these folks, like uh, they've got a social network log where they're just uh, where they're just talking and where they're just kind of saying what's on their mind. We've got a stat screen where we can see some of their profile and just random facts about them. Uh, and then we've also got their duty tab, which is which we can, which is one of the two ways that we can use to assign people to different duties. Um, so yeah, and everybody's got a different skill level at different kinds of things, and we can reassign them on the fly dynamically. Um, though it does pay to specialize people in things so that they can practice and refine their skills at something and get good at it. Anyway, so yeah, let's assign this, like, at the beginning here, we don't have anything really to do for, for these people to do except um, to uh, accept a build. So that's what we're going to assign these people to. Now I've opened up the roster screen here, and this is actually kind of a global way. We can see like all three of our people, and we can see a star rating for what different people are good at. And, and right now, yeah, we can see that like we've got two, three star builders and a one star builder, and then, you know, these other people are, are, diff are good at different things. So, um, so yeah, let's do that. Okay, these look good, and so yeah, and now we've changed uh, we've changed these people over to builder duty. We're going to unpause time, and these people will quickly say see that they have builder duty, uh, builder tasks to perform, and they're going to start doing that. Um, I can hover over somebody and get a little tooltip that shows like the most essential status points about them. They're you know this is uh, Liz McCoy, and she's building base exterior stuff, and this is how much oxygen she has left. Uh, because obviously that's very important for spacewalking people. So this building stuff is going to take a while here. Um, the, the speed at which um, the speed at which people build uh, is actually dependent on their builder skill. So it, it's not a bad thing right now that um, that we're, we have some people who are lower skill builders. It just means they'll take a little longer. But you know everybody's pitching in, and we'll get this done. So I'm going to click up in the top right here. I'm going to click the fast forward button, and that that goes up to four times the normal game speed, um, and that makes this building go faster here. So yeah, we've got some. We've got the beginnings of rooms. They build floors first, and then they're going to fill in the walls. Oh, cool! And yeah, Liz's builder skill has increased here um, because yeah, when you're not very good at something, you get better more quickly. You improve a lot early on. So yeah, everybody's humming along here. We've got the floors, and now they're building part of the walls. Um, this object here that they came over in, yeah, like so we can click on this and see a little description of it. Um, yeah, like so we could actually uh, scrap this for some extra matter. So that's a little bonus that we give players that you know will help you uh, if, if resources are a little tight. Um, for whatever reason, I just like I always keep it around just maybe for sentimental reasons or something because I like eventually building a room around it, you know, and making it the centerpiece of a pub or something just because it's you know it's style points. but you know if you're a starting player and you're worried about resources, you should definitely just, um, Use the demolish plan. I'm not actually gonna. I'm gonna cancel this order, obviously. But um, but yeah, you can drag it out and say demolish that, and then uh, that will be marked for demolition, and folks, a builder will go over to it and demolish it. And I'm gonna cancel that order because I don't actually want that done. Uh, this is one of our. Yeah, the fact that it's still red is actually one of our bugs. Uh, like I said, we are an alpha game. We've still got some kinks to work out, some just you know glitchy stuff and whatever. Uh, this thing remaining red even after we canceled the demolition on it is an example of one of those. So yeah, we've almost got, these folks have been making good progress on our rooms here, so I'm gonna start zoning these things. So like it says, uh, this is an unzoned area and we can left click to select it. That brings up a very similar uh, display to the citizen inspector, but it's for rooms. And we can pick a purpose for each of our rooms. And in this case, like we wanna put down some oxygen, uh, some, some life support, some oxygen recyclers, which means that we need to zone this room as life support. Um, and yeah, like our hint system is telling us about that up here. Okay, and I'm actually gonna pause here just so I can take my time with these decisions. 
Um, yeah, and so um, if it makes it easier to see, we've got some uh, vis mode toggle things here. Um, we can go into oxygen visualization mode, and we can see here that all these squares are red, which means that these rooms contain no oxygen at the moment. So that's something that hopefully our recyclers are going to do something about. And we can also um, go into cutaway mode on walls, which just shows the, shows the floors. Um, We've, we've tried to make the game look fine, you know, and like not occlude any important visual information without this. But if you're, you know, if you're really kind of like in room management mode or even just a visual preference or something. Uh, so yeah, so I'm gonna do that. And I'm going to zone this room as a refinery, actually. This is what we're going to need in order to have people go out and mine asteroids and then to convert them into matter that we can use to build the rest of our base. Um, I'm going to keep this thing an unzoned hallway type area, you know, like it's just general purpose space. And then I'm going to zone this little smaller room here as an airlock. Um, okay, and so I've zoned these things, but that doesn't actually, that, that only really gives these room, the, rooms the potential to be used for this thing. So I'm going to go back into the construct menu, and now we're going to put down build orders for some objects. So I'm going to click on this, and we see a big list of all kinds of different things we can do. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go to the go to the life support zone here and build that most essential of things in a space station: oxygen recyclers. And so I'm going to put down each of these is going to produce enough oxygen for about three citizens. And we're starting with three right now. And we've got some matter to spare here, and we want room to grow. So I'm actually going to tell them to build three initially. That's going to cost us uh, 300 matter. It's giving us a different figure here. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so then uh, I'm going to go, to make our airlock functional, I'm going to tell them to build a spacesuit locker. This is something that needs to be in every airlock for people to change in and out of their spacesuits in. I'm going to put that right there. Um, we need some doors just so that people can travel between these rooms, obviously. So I'm going to put in, this is an interior door, you know, and it, like, Star Trek's open and shut, you know, when you walk near, or like a supermarket door. Um, I'm also going to build an airlock door. This is another prerequisite that our hint system here is telling us about to have a functioning airlock, we need to build these airlock doors, which are special doors that, um, that yeah, that you know, know that are hooked into the airlock system here and can tell us when, um, you know, when when an airlock can open, when it's pressurized successfully, and and so and so forth. So I'm gonna hit confirm on this, and now these folks have orders to go and build these things. So this builder inside here is going to. Well, these folks will get on it eventually. This purple, uh, that purple glow effect around folks, this is another thing that we're shipping with Alpha, even though we intend to, um, to improve it in future releases. Uh, but it means that when you, see some, when you see somebody who's spacewalking and they're purple like that, it actually means that they're going under the base. Uh, yeah, it means that they're like flying underneath here. Uh, eventually, obviously, it'll actually look like they're flying underneath and you'll see like an outline or a shadow of them or something. Uh, but for now, we've got this purple glow effect, and you know we'll get to that pretty soon in an, in an upcoming alpha. So yeah, folks are building these things, and let's switch over to our oxygen visualization mode and see if we can see these. Um, yeah, the lights are coming on in here uh, because these rooms are getting um, are going out of emergency mode. And yeah, like it's happening a little gradually, but let's fast forward a little bit here. And yeah, these rooms are filling with oxygen, and they're turning yellow, and now they're turning. They're beginning to turn a pleasant shade of green. And pretty soon, these folks are going to take off their, their spacesuits. This person, uh, yeah, Patrick here must have been just itching to, uh, oh, that's not a good place to stand. Uh, Patrick here was just itching to uh, start working out. So yeah, so you know, people are, have taken off their spacesuits and they're starting to do indoor things. Uh, but yeah, so this is definitely a minimum viable base. These people you know, are no longer in danger of uh, suffocating inside their spacesuits. But there's still a lot that we've got to do to uh, really make this into a viable place. So um, we've burned through a lot of our matter here. And um, yeah, so let's, let's start thinking about how to get more. Um, let's go back into Construct and build an object that we need to put in a refinery in order for people to be able to refine stuff. Um, so yeah, this is an object that has kind of a big footprint and we can place it in rooms that we've zoned as, um, as refineries. So we do that, it's gonna cost us 200 matter. Yeah, so we're kind of getting close here. It's warning us about that. So yeah, now let's think about how to uh, how to mine out this asteroid that we've built a base right near. So let's go into the mine tool here, and sort of similar to construction, let's mark uh, let's mark out this section of the asteroid. The the fact that these that these chunks are red means that they're going to be mined. Um, yeah, and so. Right, and now it says, of course, yeah, we haven't, we've, we've still got everybody on builder duty, so actually let's make these folks miners. Um, I've kind of gotten skunked here for people with mining skill right up front, but let's, let's make them, let's have them mine, because right now it's just important that we get more matter. Um, 
Yeah, okay. Um, all right, so this person is suited up into minor gear and they're going out and they're mining and yeah, they're behind an asteroid, but trust me, they're mining. They're gonna carve off some of these chunks of asteroids and then they're gonna take them over to this refinery and put them in there and operate whatever this complicated sort of machine does and then we'll see our matter go up. So I'm gonna speed that process up. Okay, yeah, and right about now, now that we've got like a minimum viable base up and going and some time has passed, uh, we've got a ship that has come by um, and the friendly crew is saying, hey, we're coming by and we'd like to join your base. Um, you know, so this is a this is this is our this is this is an example of immigration. This is how you, this is one of the main ways that your base grows over time. So yeah, folks show up here in their uh, in, a, in like some sort of little space van type thing, and now we've got a new citizen. So let's click on them. Uh, they're off wandering out in space. Okay, yeah, they're gonna head inside. Okay, cool. And yeah, let's um, let's see here. Cool. Okay, so yeah, they they seem like they have some minor shields. So let's put them on minor duty and help they can help us address that need for oxygen for matter, rather. Um, okay, cool. All right, yeah, they might, they might just get to work right away. So, cool, yeah, this person uh, looks like they put in some, uh, they put in some matter, and we're, we're starting to get more of that. So, yeah, let's start thinking about how we're going to uh, expand this base further, um, because pretty soon people are going to get tired after their big first day of living in this base, and they're going to want to sleep, and right now they would have to sleep on the floor which is not a terrible thing in the short term, but uh, long term it means that their morale will go down and morale, I'll explain what morale does in a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna build this room here that, um, that uh, it's gonna serve as a hallway. That's gonna eat into our, into our matter budget here a little bit, but yeah. So actually let me, uh, let me mark out a place that's gonna be like a residence here. Let's see, 432, I'm kind of eyeballing this, you know. Um, all right, yeah, cool. This will this will be a place where we can put some uh, some beds. So yeah, let's hit confirm and boom. All right, so now we're really low on matter, and our builders are going to go out and start trying to make this happen. But yeah, we really need some of these resources coming in. So I'm going to speed this up here. And yeah, just the one builder working away is not. Uh, doing a whole lot. I'm gonna start using keyboard shortcuts here. I was like, you know, walking through and just showing every part of the GUI, but um, but yeah, I'm gonna hit X here to back out of that, um, which is a pretty consistently used UI convention that we've got here. So you click on something and you're like, oh yeah, what's the deal with this? And then you can hit X and bail out. Um, you can also hit escape to bring up the pause menu. So yeah. Um, yeah, all right. So yeah, we've got everything humming along. There will be times like this as you're playing Space Base, you know, where you've got some build orders out and you're just waiting for people to execute and you can watch people zipping around and making stuff happen. All right, cool. Uh, we've got another immigration request, uh, some more stuff. There's a bug. This is another bug that's in Alpha 1 right now. Um, this chicken portrait, like, we, these folks are aliens that will visit you in the game, uh, but it's possible that the crew of this particular ship is not actually a chicken. I think they just always come up. Um... Yeah, so yeah, like at this point, you know, we can really use like all the help we can get getting this new base up and up and running. So yeah, like let's accept, let's definitely accept these new people coming in. Um, I'm gonna go to the roster screen and, okay, yeah, all right. Well, this person isn't particularly good at anything. So let's actually make them the bartender for now. Even though they don't have a bar to tend, um, you know, there, there definitely will be eventually. Um, and having a bad bartender is not nearly as bad as, you know, having a bad technician or something. Uh, and I'll explain why in a little bit. So yeah, okay, cool. We've got some matter coming in. I think we've got, um, let's mark out some more construction here. I'm gonna build out another room and I'm gonna build a room around this, um, yeah, around our base seat here. Just cause again, it's kind of cool looking. Yeah. So our building's going a little bit slow here cause we've only got one person on builder duty. Um, Wait for them to mine out a little bit more, and then we can, uh, and then we can move more people over to builder duty and get all this, get this new construction done. Because people do, people are going to need beds to sleep in. Yeah. So yeah, um, it just warned us about something. Um, citizens with low morale, um, a citizen with low morale caused an accident. Um, you won't see that warning as much. The, there's a bug that we're working on today. This was actually recorded the day before we went live. Um, and yeah, we just fixed that, but yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I'll, I should explain what that's about in a second. Um, there's also a bug here where uh, this, this thing that looks like a spacesuit locker, that is actually still the refinery and it's swapping out a different sprite. That should also be fixed by the time uh, we release tomorrow and you're playing the Alpha 1. So, yeah, um, there is a legit uh, hint here that's telling us, oh, another immigration request. Uh-oh, hmm. So you can always say no to these folks, you know, and you're like, hmm, what's up with this person? Yeah, you sound like killbots, and it's like, nah, let's take a chance here. Sorry if my transmission sounded terse. I think I got too used to the character limit for my space face logs. I promise we'll be friendlier inside. Good to hear. We were admittedly a little trepidatious. So yeah, they weren't killbots this time. There are definitely, to sneak preview that a little for you, there are definitely hostile things. Oh cool, and this might be one of our first aliens here. So this is a, this is one of our alien races, and they're hopefully going to come inside. What are you good at? Yeah, you seem like a good enough miner. Why don't you come in and help us mine? Um, all right, yeah, at this point we've got plenty of matter, so why don't we just move some of these people over to builder duty? Yeah, because... Um, cool and cool. And just see if we can get this done. Um, so yeah, it's warning us. There, there's, a, there's, a, there's a hint here that is warning us about uh, machines in your base are in poor conditions. Assign more citizens to technician duty to maintain them. Um, and yeah, sure enough, like these machines that we've got in our base, like the refinery and the oxygen recycler, they have a condition uh, that deteriorates gradually over time. Um, and you need folks uh, who are skilled technicians to go and maintain these machines to like just perform maintenance on them and keep them in good working order. We don't actually have anybody who's terribly good at being a technician right now, so I was like holding off and hoping that we got somebody who was actually good at that uh, immigrating to our base. Um, and yeah, like these things degrade fairly slowly, so I think we can keep them running for a little while before we have to worry about that. But uh, once your base is really established, you're definitely going to want to have a technician or two going around maintaining things, you know. They kind of do that, um, you know, what you see Geordi LaForge doing in uh, Star Trek The Next Generation, you know, where it's like going around and just keeping the engines running and just making sure everything's cool. So yeah, let's fast forward a little bit here. Just get this uh, get this construction underway. So yeah, we're getting the walls built. So I mentioned morale a little bit earlier, and um, morale is a concept that um, we can see that every citizen has. Um, oh yeah, this person's kind of sad, um, and we can. Uh, they might be sad because they had to sleep on the floor. Um, you kind of have to like, in order to determine like why somebody might be, uh, why, might have low morale, um, it's kind of a combination of like, uh, we created this stats page to kind of give you an inside look on some of their things. Um, you can look at their unmet needs. Like all these citizens have different needs that they're trying to fulfill. And right now, as you would expect in a base that doesn't really have much more aside from empty rooms and oxygen recyclers and stuff, um, these citizens have unmet needs. In this case, uh, this gal has uh, unmet socialization and amusement needs. Uh, hopefully we'll take care of that pretty soon with our, with a, with our pub or something. Um, but yeah, they're kind of sad. And then um, let's switch over to somebody else here. Liz McCoy is happy. Clarice is ecstatic. I think you know, she's been doing a lion's share of the building maybe. And folks, so generally folks are doing pretty good. Um, so yeah, okay, cool. And these rooms are now finished. So yeah, let's start zoning them and using them for cool stuff. I'm gonna zone this room as a residence, which means that I can put beds into it. I'm gonna go out of cutaway mode here. Um, so yeah, and um, these rooms are slowly oxygenating, and yeah, pretty soon these folks will take their, their suits off. And I'm gonna zone this room as a pub, actually. Um, now, okay, yeah, actually, I have neglected the one thing that every room really should have, which is doors. I'll build some doors in here. And you know what, actually, I would like for this to just be a contiguous hallway, so I'm gonna go back here, and I'm still in construct mode, but I'm gonna go back, and I'm actually going to tell them to demolish this little dividing wall now that it's built, and then that will open up, you know, this will just be a continuous hallway. Uh, wow, the, in, the immigration requests are kinda coming fast and furious here. Um, cool, and so these people have offered to help. Seems like there's some seasoned space base. Settlers, oh, and we got two people this time. So our population is growing pretty uh, pretty rapidly here. Um, okay, let me go to the roster screen and just select them. We can see the two of them here. Um, the, the, the roster screen, by the way, has some pretty cool sorting modes. You can sort everybody by job. You can sort them like, say, give me, sort these folks by builder skill, and that will show you, you know, the most, the, the highest ranked builders up at the top. Um, yeah, actually, it looks like we've got a person that we can put on technician duty here. That's really good. 
Um, and yeah, actually this person is like decent at security, so why don't we assign them to security? Uh, security is like kind of a combination of uh, guard and uh, firefighter because there's emergencies that happen on your base and you need them to, and you need folks around who are looking out for danger to take care of it and keep everybody safe and keep the base from burning down. Um, so yeah, we've got these rooms zoned, we've got doors into them. Let's go back into construct and put down some new objects. Um, for our residents, people need beds to sleep in, obviously. Most life form, most bipedal life forms like to sleep on a comfy bed. Maybe I'm generalizing there. But. Um, okay, yeah, so let's see what kind of things we can fit in. I wasn't paying close attention to the capacity that we're gonna be able to pack into this room. So yeah, it looks like we're gonna be able to fit four beds in. And yeah, there we go. See, we've already grown enough that like these four beds aren't gonna be enough for everybody all at once. So yeah, we're gonna have to be thinking about what our, what, what our next residential area is gonna be. Um, and let's go to the pub things because the one thing that a pub needs to function is definitely a bar. And yeah, again, for style points, I built like the base, the, the, this pub thing around the, the base seed. Kind of makes it a little cramped, but you know, like some of, the, some of the hipper places here in San Francisco are also pretty cramped, you know, it adds to the ambiance. So, all right, so we'll hit confirm and soon enough, our builders will go over and build some beds build this bar, and yeah, we can click on this. This is a little bit of the procedural generation-y type stuff we've got here, like, you know, if you've played something like Dwarf Fortress, you'll know that, like, things have all interesting, wacky, randomly generated names, and we're doing kind of a similar thing with, starting to do similar things with some of the things we've got here, and this, this pub was generated out of, you know, just words that we've thrown into a Mad Libs type generator. Um, and uh, yeah, it's called the Rusty Buddha, uh-oh. Uh, so yeah, we're being alerted to a fire and it looks like, yeah, it looks like there was a fire here. Again, this thing is a glitch. Uh, we should be seeing a refinery here, but it's showing the wrong sprite. Um, so yeah, but yeah, so um, this person probably caused a fire. Um, yeah, it says that, that they might've caused a fire due to incompetence or low morale. So yeah, people are affected by this. Let's check up on our, okay, so this person, yeah, like their morale is neutral, so they're probably not too sad, but yeah, I guess their skill just isn't high enough to be able to maintain these machines effectively so you know hopefully they're they're getting better at, at what they do as time goes on so but yeah we did have a fire and that could have been a serious situation if they hadn't been like right there you know and uh, and 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 you know it, it, it can get out of hand easily um, and that's one thing by the by that uh, fires are dangerous partly because they suck up the oxygen in a the room they also cause damage to the uh, to the hull of the base and so eventually a fire will either suck all the oxygen out of a room in which case it'll put itself out or or it can actually like burn through uh, the base venting it into space uh, which is a very serious problem that you would need to send your builders out to rectify um, so yeah one thing that I can do here as a hedge against that though is I can build an object in some of these rooms I'm gonna do it in the rooms that have some like very critical machinery I'm gonna put, I'm gonna tell them to build a fire extinguisher here, which, you know, works pretty much like a conventional earth fire extinguisher. But, um, but yeah, it means that people won't have to like, you know, they'll have a means to start fire, they'll have a means to put out fires with, which is, you know, not the most advanced technology in the world, but it's pretty important. Even we here in 2013 know that. So yeah, all right, cool. So we've got some fire extinguishers. Hopefully that'll keep our risk of disaster down. Here. Okay, um, so yeah, at this point we've got beds. This person is sleeping in a bed, and that's good because, you know, when you get a good night's sleep in a bed, your morale goes up a little bit, and you feel well rested, and you can, you know, continue working and socializing and stuff. Um, by the by here, do we have, yeah, do we have a, okay, we, I think we took somebody off bartender duty. So why don't we, yeah, let's make somebody here a bartender just because then citizens will be able to go here and order drinks and relax with each other and socialize and all that good stuff. So yeah, our bartender's going into the bar here. And yeah, this is another thing that we might ship with Alpha One. Um, they're supposed to be like standing right behind the bar and playing a serving drinks, like polishing a glass or serving drinks type animation. Um, and right now they're doing kind of the wrong animation. So this is hopefully giving you an idea of what kind of bugs to expect. So at this point, we really do kind of have, we have a base where nothing is going terribly wrong. <laughs> Um, you know, and it's small and it does need to grow before too long so that it can, so that we can accept new people. But, um, but yeah, we've got, we've got a foothold here. Um, yeah, so, so let's see, how do I want to expand this? All right, cool, we're getting more immigrants. These folks are complaining about, they have a virus on their ship. Yeah. 
That's nice. It's nice when it's nice when space chickens are grateful for letting you emigrate to their to your base. Cool. Um, all right. What are you good at? All right. Yeah. Maybe we need another technician. Help help mentor the other technician. <clears throat> Again, this purple stuff means that they're flying under the base. All right, let's mark out some new construction. Um, why don't we add on to our residential zone here? I don't want to take too much longer here, and yeah. So it's telling us this text display here is giving us, you know, an idea of like how many, how many, uh, how many more beds we can fit. Um, let me make this room nice and big because we've got the matter to spend on it, and this one can fit. This one can fit eight space beds. That'll, that's good. That won't break the bank. Um, yeah, let me place a door. Let me get them to just build a door here. Because um, even though this door technically faces out into deep space right now, they'll build that door and then that door will automatically seal itself. Um, just because, you know, doors aren't... Doors are intelligent. They won't do something that will immediately doom your citizens. Um, okay, so yeah, and so our builders are going to set to work on that. Um, oxygen recyclers aren't in very good shape. Yeah, and if any of these stop working, then that is definitely a bad, a bad situation. Um, let's check up on the oxygen here. Okay, the oxygen is still good, but we are at capacity. We've got nine citizens and three recyclers, i.e. capacity for nine citizens. So let's tell folks to build another recycler here. So if we wanted to build any more, then we would need to build another, we need to expand further and build, um, build another room and zone it as life support. Um, so yeah, okay. So at this point, um, honestly, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that uh, we have another, uh, a bigger ship show up um, because that's kind of interesting and sometimes we get a derelict out there. Our security, uh, our, our citizen on security duty hasn't been able to do much that's interesting yet. Um, so yeah, we might fast forward a little bit here. Hey everybody, uh, we're back and um, a little bit of time has passed and we've gotten a new uh, uh, immigration or docking request rather um, and this one looks a little bit fishy. As you can see, our transmission relay is having some issues, not artificially jammed. Hmm, I don't know about you guys. We are not pirates, this is real. Hmm, all right, well, I don't know, should we trust them? Yeah, let's, let's trust them and hope that something exciting happens. Excellent decision. All right, and so now these folks have docked. So the visual that you just saw here, like, so this is a new ship that actually contains, you know, like, structures and geometry and stuff. Um, this visual that you saw where it just kind of popped in like that, that is a temp visual that we are shipping for Alpha 1. Eventually, um, we'd like for these ships to like kind of emerge out of, up out of like a lower level or something and do some like, you know, kind of cool theatrical looking stuff. But for now, they just pop in. That's an example of the kind of thing that is like a major bit of visual feature that we haven't gotten to yet and hope to in a, in a, in a future Alpha. So yeah, but, um, Something has happened here, and it looks like these folks have this ship that may or may not be pirates uh, has docked with our pub here, and they've like extended a docking bridge and like built a door in here. So that's a little fishy. So we've got a citizen on security duty here, and actually, why don't I go to the roster screen and just beef up like you know, just in case these folks you know turn do turn out to be hostile. Let's put an extra person on security duty. And now what we're gonna do, we want folks to go, we want, we want to find out what's inside here. It's kind of like, you know, we can only see the roof of the, the, the ceiling of the base and stuff like that. So let's go into beacon mode here. And this actually lets us put a beacon on this possibly enemy ship. And then that means that citizens on security duty are going to go and check this thing out. So yeah. So they're gonna like, um, and, I've, and I've clicked on it twice to say that I want two security people here. Just, you know, because we don't want this one person going in here and being outnumbered. So they're waiting for, I think, the other security person to show up. Where would you be? Where is our other security guard? Oh, you were out, you were out exploring or? Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Well, I guess our security person was like tooling around in space or something. Um, now what are you guys doing? <laughs> Uh, weird. Oh, what? What? They're they're coming in via an airlock. Okay. Well, yeah. This is some something something that we like to call emergent gameplay appears to be happening. So these folks are just coming in through the airlock, and I guess everybody's going to explore this thing at once now. All right. So our security our, our security duo here is going in. 
weapons drawn, because yes, they do have weapons, it's a grim business, and um, they're exploring the place. Okay, so as it turns out, there was like, uh, yeah, there were two, yeah, there were two new folks in here, and as it turns out, they weren't pirates. We were really suspicious, and uh, I think we were probably right to send in our, uh, our, you know, our guards and like make sure that everybody was safe here, but it turns out, yeah, it was just fine. So now we've got access to their ship, like they, they have a ship with an airlock here, and they've got this little resonance zone here and a uh, reactor. Reactors, by the way, they're in the zone menu and in the object menu, but they don't do anything right now. That's another major feature that we want to add is just power, where you have to provide power to rooms, but it's in some of the derelict uh, or, or docking ship uh, modules that we've authored here, but they don't. it doesn't do anything at the moment, other than look cool. Um, so yeah, now we've got some new citizens. Yeah, and we can see in their space face log, they're saying like, I just met someone uh, named the, the name of one of our security guards. So in this case, it was a nice, uh, it was a nice, it was it was nice. You know, we've got got to meet some new folks, and now they're going to have a have a brew with their new with their new friends. Um, other times, though, uh, things will not go so smoothly, and the ship the ship will be full of hostile raiders or possibly a space monster or something like that. In which case, your security forces will have to defend themselves and hopefully keep those baddies from coming into your base and wreaking havoc, uh, which, is, which would be really bad. Um, so yeah, I think that's probably a good stopping point. Um, one of the more, you know, so not the most exciting thing that happens in the game didn't happen, but I, I wanna leave, you know, at this point, this, put, this hopefully gives you an idea of how to get a, a decent base up and running, and we'll let you discover that for yourself. We'll let you discover what it's like when hostiles enter your base or out in a derelict somewhere yourself. Um, so I really hope that this has answered uh, some questions that you might have had about how to get up and running in the early game and just given you a tour of like the features and what we're shipping with Space Base Alpha 1 and uh, oh goodness <laughs> actually something bad did happen okay yeah <laughs> so these folks are fighting a monster uh, this monster apparently oh gosh and now security showing up all right yeah oh gosh oh and their laser their laser blasts <laughs> oh and right in the middle of all this somebody wants to dock uh, yeah, this is kind of a bad time. Uh, why don't you hold off on docking with us? Yeah, I'm sorry, man. Like, yeah, we're getting, like, attacked by monsters. Somebody tried to, uh, one of our security guards tried to shoot the alien, and it caught a wall on fire, and that could have been bad, you know, that might have, like, damaged the wall. But it looks like they were able to subdue... Yeah, so this parasite is dead. Uh, parasite has a space face log. Maybe that's a bug. Maybe that's just cool. You know, this is another thing about alpha game development is, you know... Um, so yeah, but yeah, that did looks like it caused a little bit of havoc here um, because indeed we see that this person here died and we're guessing that they were the original host for this parasite. They were one of the early immigrants or maybe they caught it from somebody else or who knows, there's like kind of a, yeah. Um, guys, if something, their last, let's see what her last log was. Guys, if something bursts out of my body, let the record show, called it. Oh gosh, oh this is right, oh if only we had seen the signs. This person was posting about it. I don't. I kind of feel like I'm pregnant, but that doesn't make any sense. Oh yeah. So this is an example of like you know. There's some nuances in the game. There's some stuff going on in the life sim. Oh no. Did we crash? Oh. Well, that's another that's another perk of alpha game development here. Yeah. Uh, hopefully this crash has been fixed by the time we shift alpha one tomorrow. But this is also a pretty good stopping point. This has been. Me, JP Leverton, project lead of Space Base DF9, walking you through Space Base DF9 Alpha 1. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we hope this has been educational or entertaining. Um, and yeah, you can get the game now on Steam Early Access and uh, come across exciting bugs like this one. Hopefully, hopefully, I think, I think we've probably got this one fixed by the time we ship. Hopefully, yeah. But, um, but yeah, so again, thank you so much for watching and we look forward to doing more of these videos in the future where we go over new things that we add. So uh, yeah, I think that's all. Have a good day, folks.